ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد ان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فأعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم من نفخه ونفثه وهمزه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولتكن منكم أمة يدعون إلى الخير ويأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر وأولئك هم المفلحون صدق الله العلي العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالذكر الحكيم My brothers and sisters At the end of Masnoon Khutbah you heard an ayah of the Quran as our reminder today where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says let there be amongst you a group of people who will call who will call toward good and command people toward that is known established as good as truth as the right thing and prevent prohibit evil and these are the successful people these are those people who are successful may allah make you and i among those people my brothers and sisters in islam Following this ayah, inshallah, today's khutbah will be in the light of this ayah. We will talk about first good, promoting goodness, inshallah. Something very good that actually you heard last week also. And I want to continue on that and actually explain a little bit further. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Quran that if we, he told us in the Quran that if we do his shukr, if we appreciate his blessings and follow his commands, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase for us. And if we deny, if we are ungrateful, disobedient, then his wrath is very stern. So my brothers and sisters, inshallah, today's khutbah will be like the misdaq of this ayah. First, inshallah, let's talk about some easy things. This shukr is so critical that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he taught us in the Quran some ad'iya of shukr that I would like today for our brothers and sisters to take home with you, inshallah. So there will be three ad'iya, three du'as, or ad'iya uh, in English, du'as. You know, I don't want to translate it as prayers. I think salah is also prayer. So I don't want to translate it. You know, du'a. Invocation, maybe it's the closest English translation. So, inshallah, three ad'iya. You want to do it as a take home today. And inshallah, memorize them, learn them, understand them, and then implement them, inshallah. And I hope so, all of us. So, I'll start with the Quran. In Surah Al Naml, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us the dua of Sulaiman alayhi salam. After all the blessings of Allah that he was blessed with, that no Nabi has been given even a kingdom like the kingdom of Sulaiman alayhi salam. What he does, he does Allah's shukr. He makes a very special dua, my brothers and sisters. And we should learn that dua. So first, take home right from the beginning, inshallah. Learn this dua, my brothers and sisters. Surah Al-Naml, very easy to know. Juz 19. Juz 19, ayah 19. You don't have to take notes about it. 19, 19. Juz number 19. Ayah number 19. What is the dua? Ba'da a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim. He says, Sulaiman alayhi salam, Rabbi awzi'ni 
أن أشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علي وعلى والدي وأن أعمل صالحا ترضاه وأدخلني برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين صدق الله العلي أمين Allah Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken the truth. Beautiful dua, my brothers. A beautiful dua. Look at the meanings. He says, O oh Lord, O oh Rabb, bestow upon me, enable me, allow me that I may thank you, I may be grateful to you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon me and my parents. And enable me to do such good deeds that you shall be pleased with. You see, brothers, riba is very important. You might be doing great good deeds all your life. From the time you became a mature person till the day you leave this dunya. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with them, what good they are good for? What good deeds are they then? They're no good. So the words are very powerful, my brothers and sisters. And when you make this dua, try to make it with that understanding and that sense behind it. Not just for the sake of a ritual, you know what I mean? Not just for the sake of a ritual. Not as a rasm, as they say in the Arabic language. Not just as a rasm. Make a big deal out of it. If you're really saying something that your heart and your body and your tongue does agree with. Your soul is in agreement with that. And then in the end he concludes, وَأَدْخِلْنِي بِرَحْمَتِكَ فِي عِبَادِكَ الصَّالِحِينَ That include me with your mercy among your righteous. Of course, in the, this is a part of Akhir also. Uh, Salihin will all be gathered, inshallah, in one place. May Allah make you and I among those people. So my brothers and sisters, again remember this. Without the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Without the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you and I cannot even thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is an important lesson to learn from this dua. And then same dua is a dua of a believer. If you and I want to be among the believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us the same dua in the Quran again in Surah Al-Ahqab, just Juz number 26, ayah number 15. Same words. Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidai. Same words. Wa an a'mala salihan tarudah. And here is something extra in this dua. Here, extra. That's why I said three duas. This dua is different. It's not exactly the same. Quran is not repeating things uh, out of redundancy. No, no, no. There is some scholars have dealt into this. The next, next part is very special. And you and I all have a stake in this. Many of you, especially those who are married and who have children. That is the additional part. Three additional things. In this dua, this dua of shukr, you are saying Allah, not just me, that I want to do your shukr, I want to do good deeds that you will be pleased with. Not just that, also my progenies. Guide my progenies also. Fix their matters also. My duriyat, my progeny, at least my immediate progeny. That would be included in this dua. And second additional thing in this dua, I am making tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am making tawbah. And Third thing, I am renewing my Islam, that I am a Muslim. It's like a renewal of Islam, reaffirmation. You're doing another affirmation that I'm a Muslim. I submit, I surrender before you. Not just Muslim by ID. I am Muhammad Fulan, Fulan, Abdullah, Abdul, you know, Abdul Samad, Fulan, Fulan. No, I am surrendering before you. I have submitted this before you. Like Allah says in the Quran, Everything that is in the heavens and the earth submits to him, is in Islam before him. How come you and I are not in that submission? That is the Islam that is meant here. Not just a namesake Muslim Islam. Everything.
everything that is in the heavens and the earth has submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How come you and I have not? So therefore, my brothers and sisters, the, this, the meanings of these adriya are very vague. These two that you have so far learned literally are telling us that we must renew our faith and we must put our complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot do good without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot do shukr without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And any good deeds that you, will, you and I will do or are doing or have done are no good unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with those. And in the end, if we did not make tawbah, if we did not correct our affairs, our actions are not fixed, then this dua is just like karrami bil qawsi bila watar. Like someone who's shooting an arrow, but there is no thread. It's not going to hit the target. Da'i bila amal, karrami bil qawsi bila watar. So tawbah, a correction of my amal, my actions, and declaration coming back to Islam again, the real Islam, submission, surrendering before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that every walk of life, every talk of life, from morning to the evening, from the time I come to this dunya, the time I leave in every matter, Islam has to be my way of submission. That is what submission means, that I have surrendered before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This should be the ultimate goal, a very high goal. And of course, not everybody is going to achieve that excellence like the prophets of Allah have achieved, but at least trying it will get us somewhere. And eventually, inshallah, we will be included by the mercy of Allah among the salihin. Jannah is the outcome. These two adriya are telling you, inshallah, if this dua gets accepted, if these, uh, if these, only these two adriya, my brothers, got accepted, and only Allah knows whose dua will be accepted and whose is not, then you and I, inshallah, will be guided. We'll be among the guided people. We'll be among the people of Jannah, inshallah. Ta'ala. Our tawbah will be accepted. Look how big this thing is. Then, my brothers and sisters, the third one that you heard last week, very famous, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, O oh, Mu'ad, this is uh, narrated by Imam Ahmad, Imam Abu Dawood, Imam Al-Nasai, many other muhaddithin. Imam Al-Nabawi brought this in his Riyadh Salihin. He says, I love you, Mu'ad, for the sake of Allah. It's a big, big news. If Rasulullah loves you, we all claim to love Rasulullah, but imagine if Rasulullah pinpoints a companion and tells him, I love you, for the sake of Allah. That's a huge testimony of his Iman. It's a testimony. It's a, like, you know, this, this guy is... Good. He's good to go. And out of that love, Rasulullah taught that dua. So that's, this must be something special, a pearl, a jewel that Rasulullah gave him. Just like in the light of Quran. See, interestingly, Ad'iya of Quran, a little bit of tadabbur point here for the students of knowledge. A lot of Ad'iya of the Quran, majority of them start with Rabbi or Rabbana. Ad'iya of hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu have taught us in sunnah, most of them start with Allahumma. That's something very interesting to ponder upon. So this dua, he teaches him, say, O Mu'ad, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Like really it's a translation of these two first ad'iya, but it covers some other elements also. That Allah allow for me, bestow upon me, enable me to do your dhikr, your shukr, and husni ibadatik, meaning excellence in your obedience, not just worship. Everything in deen, when we obey Allah and His Rasul, it can be ibadah. This is very important also. And there are two occasions. Uh, the Imam of Al Mundri, I think, in Mishkat al Masabih, he says his, his opinion is that this should be done in the Salah. Some scholars say that it should be done after the Salah. Both are, inshallah, I believe both are correct. Because the word they use is Dubur is Salah. So the Dubur is not out of the body, it's part of the body. And Ibn Taymiyyah also agrees with that. So before Taslim. But well, this is what I do. Sometimes I say it in the Salah, sometimes I do it after Taslim. Let's say you forgot, you didn't remember. Just say it whenever you remember, my brothers and sisters. So third gift, inshallah. 
third khair, inshallah, to take home today. And this, my brothers and sisters, zikr of Allah is really remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are three things you're asking here again. To remember Allah in every walk of life, in every action, in every walk of life. When I am, you know, with my colleagues, co-workers, non-Muslims, acquaintances, friends, jobs, businesses, wherever I am, Allah should be before me. Allah should be in my view. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in my view, uh, this is when I could fall in error. And there is other dhikr that is by tongue. And that dhikr can happen in the form of shukr also. Three things, because you're saying Allah, allow me to do your dhikr, your shukr, and obedience in the best manner. You're asking Allah to help you do that. So shukr, my brothers and sisters, first step is that your heart, your heart has to be filled with this feeling, deep down, completely filled with that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me everything and I love him. Even if he doesn't give me something, I still love him. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like your, your, your qalb should be filled with that. That is the beginning of that shukr. And then the tongue should manifest that. And you know that. It's like, you know, it's like a cup. You hold a cup, you fill it up, you fill it up, and then you overfill it, and then it starts to pour out. It starts to drop out. That should be your tongue. Alhamdulillah in every walk of life. You woke up, you said Alhamdulillah. You ate food, you said Alhamdulillah. You, you know, you, you're driving, you're saying dhikr of Allah. You're going uphill, you're saying Allahu Akbar. You're going downhill, you're saying Subhanallah. You're doing salah, you're saying a lot of extra Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah. You're, you're doing hamd, shukr of Allah inside out every day, day in and out. In every step of life. Until you go to bed at the end of the day, you do shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dua, the Rasulullah. That's the shukr with tongue. And then, my brothers and sisters, this is by tongue. Like, like, remember, I gave you an example of a jug or a cup that is filled and it's now spilling. That's tongue. But the, the bigger shukr, the deeper shukr is that you have to, you have to uh, use these blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has given you and I for what they are made for, for what they are created. Whatever they are given for. It's like yeah, I, I gave this example before also. If I gave you a gun, that brother, you are our guard. You know, you watch that door, stand there with the gun. And so that gun is to protect us. But imagine, astaghfirullah, la the brother, I give this gun to guard us, he starts to shoot us. So he's using it against its purpose. Do you understand that example? Inshallah, it won't happen here. Don't be scared. <laughs> People got this is just for us to think. That is the shukr of our limbs and the blessings of Allah that Allah has given us to use them for what they are made. My brother and sister, I want to share with you a story of an Imam from our Salaf time. He was looking at his uncle doing tahajjud. He was looking at his uncle doing tahajjud. He was very little shared his story. He said, he asked him that, can you also teach me how to do the salah? I was very little at that time. He says, right now, before you start the hajjud, your time will come. But right now, when you lay down, before you go to bed, say three things. That Allah is with me, you know, with all his qualities. And Allahu nadhirun alayh, Allah is looking at me, and Allah is shaheed on everything I do. Just say these three things in your heart three times. He says, he shares his story from our cell of time. I'm narrating the story to you. He says, I started liking it as a kid. He says, then I told him, he says, Uncle Khal, he was just Khal. He says, I love it. What should I do? He says, say it seven times now. He says, I loved it even more. So I asked him, Why is, I really love it. He hasn't started the Hajjud yet. Notice. He says, well, you love it, then remember, you should always keep it in mind wherever you are in your life. This is my brother's dhikr of Allah. This is the beginning of shukr of Allah that will guide you to do husn ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
it will automatically guide you. And he says, then in my entire life, every time I was going to do something, I remember these three words that yeah, Allah is here. Allah is looking at me with his qualities. He says, I would think, and I say, Allah is looking at me, and he's a witness over what I'm doing. So he says, that actually guided all my life. My brothers and sisters, if we instill only this in our kids, their tongues, inshallah, will become tongues of vaqirin and shakirin, inshallah, and they will become abideen. Allahumma ja'alna min hawla. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد My brothers and sisters in Islam You all know living in this country living especially in the West This is they call it the holiday season in this country and some people also call it the hallmark season or the shopping season where actually a lot of people, their pockets will be robbed. And then January and February becomes the depression season. Yeah. High rate of suicides, high rate of problems start after this. Why in Islam we don't have too many celebrations like that? Have you ever thought about this? Because my brothers and sisters, it is against the spirit the essence, the philosophy of Islam. Islam has a very different philosophy. And of course, if you want to live like sheep who follow the ways of the others, that's your cho choice, that's your prerogative. But at least if you want to know deen, if you want to live and follow Islam, then you should know better that this is against the essence of Islamic spirit, the Islamic philosophy. Islam is against these things for many, many, many reasons. And one simple reason is you have to witness only two months. One for us and one for the other groups among Muslims. You know, there are two major groups among Muslims. You know that. One is Muharram, the other is Rabi'ul Awwal. MashaAllah, Ghulat, people who exaggerate, you will see they commit shirk. In, they go to the extremes of shirk. Israf, extravagance, wasting resources, wealth, and everything in these two months. One does it in the name of Prophet's family, and our brothers, many of our brothers do it in the name of Rasulullah's love. To me, the most hypocritical thing is to waste millions of dollars in the name of Rasulullah's love and call it the love of Rasulullah, and you don't even remember. How many millions of Muslims who could have been fed with that money, who there are widows, there are orphans, who could have had education, who could have gone to school with that money, or those children, millions of children who are at this time while we are talking on the brink of starvation in refugee camps of Syria and Yemen and other places, all these areas, and God knows how many that we don't even know about. Wallahi, if Rasulullah was with us, if he was with us physically here, he would tell you that you are munafiqeen. You are hypocrites. You do this in the name of my love, and yet I taught you a dua that Allah give me the love of masakeen. Allahumma inni as'aluka fi'l al-khayrat wa tark al-munkarat wa hubb al-masakeen. This is the love of Rasulullah. Love the miskeen. Feed the miskeen. Take care of the needy. Take care of the armala. Take care of those widows, my brothers and sisters, who are being sold right now in the brothels that have been opened because of the war. Where is your love of Rasul? You have kuffar who have opened, you know, healthcare clinics and all that. A handful of doctors. I got an email two days ago, like nine or ten doctors, they went to, to see, uh, you know, these sick children who are actually malnourished, you know, because of the blockade and all that. Alhamdulillah, it is getting better now. The thousands and thousands of people they saw within a span of two weeks. And you were busy. Many people were busy in decorating streets, cutting cakes worth millions. That's munafiqat. That is nifaq. That's hypocrisy. That is not love of Rasulullah. By any standards, my brothers and sisters, even by the standards of kuffar, that is not the love of Rasulullah. And then if someone tells you that this is not good, 
This is not the true love of Rasul You put names on him. You call him Wahhabi and you call him this and that and that. What is this? And then worst of all, shirk that happens in the name of Rasulullah I don't care about the others. I hope inshallah the message gets to them as well. But I care about us, the majority who's here. We are the 85% of this ummah. And we should be the last people, my brother and sister, to do shirk in the name of Rasulullah Ghulat are doing this, my brothers and sisters. We need to clean this up. And yet, look how much Rasulullah was having ghira for tawheed. Has anybody ever looked at the seal of prophethood? You know, the, the seal Rasulullah used to put stamp on his letters. It has three words. If you get a chance, show this to your kids also. Muhammad Rasul Allah. Muhammadur Rasulullah. Look at it. Do you know where is Allah in that seal? If you write it in the order, Muhammad should be first, Rasul should be second, Allah should be the third. It is written from bottom to bottom to top. Allah Even that seal of prophethood speaks for Allah's tawheed, my brothers and sisters. Where is this ummah heading? Worst of all the evils is shirk. That is not forgiven. Even if there is a hint of shirk in something, run away from that because Allah will forgive anything but the shirk. See where we are heading, my brothers and sisters? And then the, uh, the Kaaba, cleansing of Kaaba. Do you know where, how the last idol was broken that was very high? Rasulullah told, he broke many with his own blessed staff. And then the last one, the big one, he told Ali to write on his shoulder, on the shoulder of Nabi, where the seal of prophethood is there. Under the foot of Ali and he's up and he's breaking that idol. And today people are committing shirk in the names of these two. May Allah guide us all. These are bitter talks, my brothers and sisters. I know some people will not like this because mashallah our masjid is a mix of many, many groups. I know some people don't like that. But really, I am here on this member. I chose to stay in this masjid, chose to stay in this community for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it was for dunya, I would have been earning money as an engineer somewhere. So that's why I have a passion, I have a dream to say good, to say the haq, to say the truth, no matter if you like it or you don't like it. You know how they say in America, America like it or leave it. That's a saying in this country. And the day I find that I am not getting anywhere with this community, inshallah, I will make hijrah. I will not stay here. Because I see we have many evils creeping in our own community that we need to fix. We need to fix many of those wrongs that are heading in our homes. One of those after this shirk problem, the most serious is israf. In our own community, there's a problem of israf. There's a problem of extravagance, display of wealth, display of luxuries, competition. Your children are suffering from that. They come home and argue with their parents that such and such person's son, such and such person's daughter has this thing. Why I don't have that thing? And then it creates a tanakus, a competition of dunya, my brothers and sisters. We need to fix our problems. We need to spend all this extra money on good places. Brothers, you one click of Google, you can help all these needy Muslims. You want to celebrate Rasulullah's life? Do it the right way. Do it by teaching his seerah to Muslims. These are the alternatives I'll give you. Establish strong families where you can teach them deen. You can celebrate the life of Rasulullah by teaching them one hadith every day. Every day one sunnah of Rasulullah Talk about him. You will see the real love will come. When you give somebody one day, my brothers and sisters, here's uh, an answer to those who say, what's wrong with doing one day? There is Columbus Day. There is President's Day. There is this day. There is MLK, Martin Luther King's Day, blah, 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 right? That's an argument they say. I say, I say to them, shame on you to belittle Rasulullah that he is equal to day just like them. That is a you know, bitter medicine for those people. What a shame. That you have equated Rasulullah that low, that low that he needs a day just like the, everybody else. This means he's equal to them. And yet Rasulullah, nobody is like him among, among all the creation. لم يخلق الرحمن مثل محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم 
How come we forgot that, my brothers and sisters? Have we brainwashed ourselves? We have lost the concept of our own identity. Be proud of your own identity. Instill that in our kids. Take an example of childbirth. Muslims celebrate the child after coming to the world. Kuffar celebrate the child before coming to this world. We do aqiqah. They don't do aqiqah. We have our own identity. If you don't believe me, learn from the Jews. You have outnumbered them in number. Most likely now Muslims are more than Jews. But are we respected more than Jews or less? When there is a Jewish holiday, Congress is not in session. Learn from them. Be proud of your own identity. Live that identity. Your enemies, your opponents, or your acquaintances, your co-workers, they will respect you for that, my brothers and sisters. Inshallah. They will respect you, but you have to live up to that. If you start changing your names, don't call me Muhammad, don't call me Ma Majid, call me Max. What? Who will respect you? Become Muhammad, become Majid, become Abdullah. Don't try to change your names. Don't try to change your skin color. It's not going to earn you any respect. Believe it or not. Michael Jackson tried that. And he didn't get it anything. May Allah guide us all, inshallah ta'ala. Last request. Many of you get uh, very um, excited. The brother asked me some questions a couple of months ago during the khutbah. I have a proposal that I stay here, alhamdulillah, almost an hour after Juma. You can ask me questions after the Juma, or you can give those to me on a piece of paper at the start of the khutbah. If they are, uh, I am able to answer them right then and there, relevant, then I will in the khutbah, inshallah, in the second khutbah, inshallah. So this way you are involved, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all, make us among those who follow Quran and Sunnah in the best way possible, inshallah. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. ربنا وزعنا أن نشكر نعمتك التي نعمت علينا وعلى والدينا ونعمل صالحا تضاه وادخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين واصلح لنا في ذرياتنا إنا تبنا إليك وإنا من المسلمين ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم وقنا الصلاة